and I was like, let me make a short video. Something tells me this will not be a short video. Hi, so this is the second video that I'm filming and I've learned a lot of things from the last one because that was just ridiculously blurry. I, I don't understand how, but we're learning. I hope this one won't be as bad because then it doesn't really make sense. But anyway, this time I'm going to talk about all of the five stars that I've given in 2025. And there were quite a few. Let me show you. So we're going to talk about all of these books. Look at them. So beautiful. So I'm going to do this review in chronological order. So I'm going from the first to the last book that I've read. I think that makes the most sense since they're all five stars. So I don't really know how else to categorize them. Um, and let's start with January. I also wrote a little list and somehow I uh, managed to read more than one book each month that was five stars. So there were some months I didn't read a five star book, but all of the months in which I found a five star book, there were more than one. So that was impressive. Uh, okay, let's talk January. In January, I read these two books. I read Before the Coffee Gets Cold and Before the Coffee Gets Cold Tales from the Cafe by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. Uh, this is the first and this is the second from the series. Uh, this one I did start at the very late in December in 2022 and then finished it in the beginning of 2023. Um, but I loved it. It was just such, such stunning book, both of them. I'm going to talk about them at the same time because they have the same premise. It's the same thing, basically. I love this book. So this book is about a cafe in Japan that there is one seat in the cafe where you can sit and it brings you back in time but there are rules there's like five rules i believe uh let me look for them okay i found the rules um in the fourth book which i'll be reading in 2024 but we'll ignore that because the books in the uh, the rules in these two books are more scattered um, and I wanted to read all of them together. So the first rule is that when you go back to the past, you can only meet people who have visited the cafe. No matter how hard you try, you cannot change the present. That's the second. The third is that a ghost sits in the chair that takes you back to the past. So you have to wait um, one time a day when um, the ghost stands up and goes to the bathroom. And only in that time can you sit on the chair. Uh, the third is that no, that was the third. The fourth is that when you go back to the past, you cannot get up or move from the chair. And five, there is a time limit. So I, I feel like all these rules make the book so much better because otherwise it's just like, it's talking about people going back to the past. But here it's very, very strict. You have time um, to go in the past just before the coffee gets cold. Um, and you have to drink it before that. As soon as you drink it, it brings you back to the present. And it's like 10 minutes. So it's not a lot of time. And uh, both the first and the second, um, it revolves around four stories. So the books in themselves is like collections of short stories. Um, as you can see, let me show you. Like there are four stories and each story concentrates on different people. And when I tell you that these two books made me cry, I was weeping like a little baby. The way the author writes these stories is just so heartbreaking. And I, I also love Japanese writers because they, they write about the mundane. Just not everything has to be amazing or impressive. Like sure, in these two books, there's time travel, but it's not really that big of a deal. Like, sure, they go back in the past, but it's about human relations and just their feelings and day-to-day -day life. And I just, I absolutely love them. These two were so good. I read one after the other and they're, they were just fantastic. I definitely one of my favorite authors, 100%. Swim, 
next we have the books I read in June. There is quite a, a time skip from January to June, but I guess I didn't read five stars book uh, um, in between. Also, I had university, so I didn't read that much in between. Um, so my five stars book for June were Before Your Memory Fades is the third book. And um, Kim Ji Young, Born 1982 by uh, Cho Nam Ju. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is uh, Japanese. This is South Korean. Um, and just, again, this one, let's start with this one. Uh, this one follows the same premise as the other one, um, except in this one, there is another cafe um, in Hokkaido, I believe. So the first one's in Tokyo, this one I think is in Hokkaido, in which you can also uh, travel to the past. The same rules apply, only sitting in one chair, you can only go for before the coffee gets cold. And um, the same premise, different people. I also thought that the stories were very, very nice. I, I would say that this isn't as good as the first two, but I still found that it's a five star for me. Some people might disagree, um, but I just like, I loved it. The stories in it. This one I believe has, yeah, this one has four as well. Um, and in the second book as well, uh, you have a relationship map of the characters. So it tells you who's who and how they're related. And it's just, it's so good. Also, how beautiful are the covers? They also shine. This one doesn't shine as much. These two do. Like, they are gorgeous. Can you see that? They're just stunning. Let me put this back. And so, this was the third book. Again, I loved it. Um, this was a present from one of my friends. And um, she always puts cute stickers in the price tag. And I think that's the cutest thing ever. She also did it for the fourth one. Because, see how cute that is? That is adorable. So both of these are from my friend. Thank you, so. And um, yeah, that was the third book that I gave a five star in 2023. And now it's uh, this one, Kim Ji Young. Um, this one I finished reading in June of uh, the 16th of June. Um, it's uh, again, a gift from a friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I just, I did read it because uh, it was recommended by RM and also Jack Edwards. I, if you're watching me, I'm sure you're watching him. Um, <laughs> he's a, a booktuber. And uh, I just, I love this book so much. It talks about feminism, especially in South Korea, because it's pretty bad in there. Just the, the way people treat women in general and how they're seen. And I love that this book has um, just references to articles, like real articles, see? Like my little academic heart was like beating of happiness while I read this. And I think I read it in two or three days. Could have done it in one, but I just, every time I read it, I got so, so, so angry because I related to so many of the things said in this book. Just the writing also is so beautiful and it's just, oh, it's beautiful. Let me read you um, what this is about. So uh, Kim Ji-yong, born 1982, is the South Korean sensation that has got the whole world talking. The life story of young uh, one young woman born at the end of the 20th century raises questions about endemic misogyny and institutional oppression that are relevant to us all. Riveting, original, and uncompromising, this is the most important book to have emerging from South Korea since Han Kang, the vegetarian. Um, so yeah, this was just, oh, I loved it. Fully recommend. Like, I recommend this to everyone because it's just so good. And I know the author now has another book. I don't recall the name. I know that it's also about feminism and I do want to read that one as well. Um, but I don't have it at the moment. Still, this was fantastic. June was great. No I... These are the July books. Uh, let me do them in order, I guess. Um, this is 
How to Kidnap the Rich by Rahul Raina. I hope I'm doing uh, pronouncing that right. Um, and it's just, I, I did not expect to like this as much as I did. I will be honest, I fully bought this book because it was from a secondhand store and I like the title and I like the book cover and that's the sole reason I bought it for the cover. Also, it's very cheap, like I said. Um, it's by a um, author that divides his time between Oxford and Delhi, which is also why I um, considered this a book from um, India. I have like a world map and I try to read a book by an author from each country. I'll do a video about that another time. But for now, this is, again, How to Kidnap the Rich. Uh, let me read you the blurb because I'm just going to mess the whole book if I explain it myself. Uh, okay, so Ramesh is an um, examinations consultant. He's a cog in the wheel that keeps India's middle class thriving. When he takes an exam for Rudy, an intolerably lazy but rich teenager, um, he accidentally scores the highest mark in the country and uh, propels Rudy into stardom. What's next? Blackmail, reality television, grotesque wealth, and after that? Kidnap, double kidnap, reverse kidnap. In a studio filled with hot lights with millions of eyes on the boys and a government investigator circling, the entire country begins to question, who are they? It's like they said about Ramesh and Rudy. And it was just, it wasn't the plot in itself. It was the writing of this book. The writing was absolutely beautiful. And I myself never heard of this book or of the author. It's just not one of those books that get recommended, I guess. Um, and it's just, it was stunning. And um, like with the majority of books that... Um, I loved I also there are some funny parts that I did mark and it's just so good though it's it's written from Ramesh's perspective like his life from um, just from the very very bottom of the Indian society and how he reaches the top just to fall and then just reinvent himself I'm not gonna spoil this but this is this is beautiful and in the beginning of the book you hate Rudy, the rich guy. He's just so pretentious and arrogant. But more, the more and more you read, you get to know him as well. And his relationship with Ramesh. And it's just um, somehow they become unlikely friends. And again, the writing, absolutely stunning. I fully recommend. If you ever see this, please, please, please buy it. It's just fantastic. I loved it. Um, and then the second book that I read in July was Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukegawa. Again, I believe this is a Japanese book, uh, a Japanese author, pretty sure. Um, this is a book that I bought three copies of and gave the other two to my friends so we could read it together and have like a little book club. That never happened. They did read it. One of them read it in like a day or two. So good job. And the other one took a bit longer, but I'm still very proud of her for reading it. Uh, and again, I just, it was such a heartbreaking book. Um, at least I found it heartbreaking. Um, it's a Japanese author and I, I may stereotype them, but it's about the mundane. Um, nothing giant happens. It's um, um, about San, uh, Sentaro, uh, who has a criminal record and he doesn't can't get hired in a better place. So he works at a uh, sweet bean paste stand and he makes them every day and he's kind of... Um, he does have depressive episodes and thoughts of uh, suicide, so that is a trigger warning. Um, but one day he meets Tokue, she's an uh, old lady that uh, comes and asks if he, she can work with him at the stand uh, so she can make really good bean paste. Um, and somehow the two of them start working together. At first, Santaro is very reluctant and doesn't really know how to feel about Takue. Uh, but with the time, they uh, form an unlikely friendship. And the, 
I really want to spoil it, but the end, oh my god, the end of the book is so heartbreaking. I'm like, I was like, ah, oh. I don't even know how to explain it, but it was so, so heartbreaking. Um, but I fully, fully recommend, again, five star. Um, it was so easy to read. There were so many things in the book that I marked. Oh my god, stop concentrating on my face. There are so many things. I also try to match it with the cover because it's all blue and pink. And it's just, oh, so nice. Like, um, the way they talk about the sweet bean paste and um, how um, Centauro is completely demotivated in the beginning, but slowly starts to want to live again. And it is a kind of a bittersweet ending, but it's the mundane. You know, it makes sense. It's not one of those stories that, and they had a happy ending. Those are good, but sometimes you need books like this. So fully, fully recommend this. This is Sweet Bean Paste. And those were the July books. These are the August books. First I read, yeah, first I read Cursed Bunny. And then I read, um, okay. Curse Bunny is by Bora Chung, again, South Korean. Um, I'm on a wave, like all South Korean and Japanese authors, they write for me, apparently, because I always give them five stars. And uh, then I read Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Um, both of these, again, gifts from friends. Thank you very much. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you. I love receiving books. Uh, all right, so first let's start with Cursed Bunny. Uh, Cursed Bunny is a series of short stories um, that aren't exactly scary, like it isn't horror. It's a bit more towards the macabre and the... It just... They don't make sense sometimes. They're, they're absurd, if you will. And sometimes, well... Most of the times I had no idea on what to expect, no idea. Um, and some parts were just, I, I don't even know how to explain this book. Let me just read you the blurb. Cursed Bunny is a genre defined collection of short stories by Korean author Bora Chung. Uh, blurring the lines between magical realism, horror, and science fiction, Chung uses elements of the fantasy and surreal to address the very real horrors and cruelties of patriarchy and capitalism in modern society. Uh, Anton Hur's translation skillfully captures the way Chung um, prose effortlessly glides uh, from being terrifying to wryly humorous. That's right, I also wanted to mention the translators. I forget, but I will do that from now on. Uh, Curse Bunny was translated by Anton Hur, Hur, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, and um, I don't know, retrospectively, I don't think I would give this a 5, like realistically speaking, but at the moment when I read this, I was in the mental state in which this book, just the way it's written, the stories, it just, it felt like a 5, so I gave it a 5, and I find that so interesting with books because it really depends on when you read it and how you read it and how you feel at the moment. So the moment I read this, it was in August, I gave it a five. So this was a five. I also want to read Bunny. Um, don't recall the author right now, but <laughs> um, there's a lot of books with rabbits either in the title or just on the cover. I don't know why, who decided that, but I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know. And uh, the next book is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie um, Garmus. Uh, right now, there's also a TV show, I want to say. Haven't watched it. Don't think I will. But the book, the book was so good. Oh, my God. This is like one of those few books that I religiously tabbed it like there are so many tabs and i have like all the tabs um named because i annotated the hell out of this book also my favorite uh annotation was give me a second this color which says amam all men are bastards because this book 
will make you hate men. Not all men. There are only like two, three. There are exactly three good men in this entire book. Three, maybe four, if you consider the priest at the end. But that's like ridiculous. Because it's just, it made me so angry. It's about um, this chemist, Elizabeth. Let me just read you the blurb. My explanations are terrible. Okay, chemist Elizabeth Zott is not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing. But in the early 1960s, an all, uh, her all-male team at the Hastings Research Institute takes a very unscientific view of equality. Forced to resign, she reluctantly signs on as the host of a cooking show, Supper at Six. But her revolutionary approach to cooking, fueled by scientific and rational commentary, grabs the attention of a nation. And soon, a legion of overlooked housewives find themselves daring to change the status quo, one molecule at a time. This was a book I've never heard of before. This was gifted to me by a friend again. Uh, and um, I just, I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. Again, it made me so angry. Like the men in this book are mostly trash. So bad, genuinely terrible. Um, but the book in itself, the writing also, I do have a big book fear, genuine book fear. Um, and this is a big book. Uh, it has like, well, it's not really a big book, is it? It's like 390, but it feels like a big book. And, but it reads so easily that it's just, you will glide through it. It's beautiful. There is also a twist in the mid, uh, in the middle. There's a part like you don't expect and it kind of derails the story, but in the most beautiful way. And it is, again, heartbreaking. But at the end, everything, it's not really a happy ending. It's more like an open ending, but it's its an open ending towards happiness, if that makes sense. And it's just fully, fully recommend. Again, a five star. I loved it so much. Did not expect to love it as much as I did. Um, but it, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. So these were my August 2023 five stars. These were the September books. So in September, I read the five stars. I read Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. And My Name is Leon by Kid Duvall. September. Um, first, I read Red, White and Royal Blue. Again, giant book by my definition. It's just, it's a mammoth. It's very big. I did not expect it to be this thick. The reason I read it is because I saw the movie and it looked quite interesting. Like, it, for once, it looked like a good movie. So um, I wanted to read the book before I watched the movie. Haven't watched the movie yet, but I didn't finish the book. So good job, me. Also, this is... Did I write nothing in it? Oh, I did annotate it. I just forgot to put the tabs in. Sometimes I do that at the end. Um, this is a book about Alex, who is the son of the president of the United States and Henry, the prince, the UK prince. Um, and it's basically an enemies to lovers uh, plot. It's, a, can I say gay? It's LGBTQ plus um, because there is romance between two men and I don't know, it felt very young adult, it is young adult, and I haven't read one in a really long time. Uh, I found the writing to be beautiful, I found that um, usually they either move way, like the story and the relationship either moves way too fast or way too slow, and I found that this book found a nice pace just to make the relationship make sense because sometimes they go from hate to love in like three seconds and it's just like buddy you have mental issues but this book didn't do that um i felt like every word or every action that was in this book were there for a reason and it was just yeah be um, beautifully written is a stretch 
because it wasn't beautifully written. Um, it was, it's a comfort book. That's why I gave it a five. It felt comforting reading it. Um, the characters are likable. The sidekicks are, again, really likable. Uh, the adults actually feel like adults uh, most of the time. And um, it's a really good book. So I don't really have much to say about it. This was Red, White and Royal Blue. Also, I love the title. It's so witty. And uh, then in September, I read My Name is Leon by Kid Deval. Uh, it's about this boy, Leon. He's nine years old, I believe. Um, nine or eight years old. In, and it's happening in 1981. Um, he's given into foster care. Well, not exactly given. He's taken into foster, uh, foster care. Foster, foster care. Yes. He's taken into foster care with his brother. And uh, it's important to know that Leon is a black kid and his brother, I do not recall his name, Jake. Jake is white um, and his mother is uh, either a, dr a drunk or a junkie. I think it's both. Um, his mother is not good. So Leon goes into foster care. Um, and it's just his story and the way he sees the world and the adults he meets. And it's this book, I can fully say, that is beautifully written. Again, bought it from a second hand, bought it just because of the cover, loved it. Did not expect to love it as much as I did, but it was, it was so, so good. I fully recommend reading this. Um, let me read you the blurb. Okay. Uh, in 1981, a year of riots and royal weddings, the Duke of... Hazard is on TV. Curly whirlies are in the shops and trying to find a place in uh, it all is a nine-year-old Leon. He and his little brother Jake have gone to live with Maureen. They've lost one home, but have they found another? Maureen feeds and looks after them. She has wild red hair and mutters swear words under her breath when she thinks they can't hear. She claims everything will be okay, but will they ever see their mother again? Who are the couple who secretly visit Jake? Between the street violence and the street parties, Leon must find a way to reunite his family. Um, so yeah, he goes. It's also about the women in Leon's life. Obviously, he's nine years old, but it's about his mother who didn't properly take care of him and never really loved him ever. Uh, and um, then there's Maureen who fosters him and Maureen... Um, can I say that? Is this a spoiler? And Maureen, um, I'll say it because I will. Um, and Maureen uh, doesn't have the best health. So she goes into hospital. She doesn't die till the end of the book. Like spoiler alert, but she never dies. So don't worry. Um, Maureen goes into the hospital. So Maureen's sister takes Leon and they're both great. They're very different spec uh, spectrum, spectres. They're at the different sides of great, great. It's like, I can't speak. Oh my God. They're on different sides, but they're just amazing. And Leon is such a smart, but also he doesn't really understand the world. He's nine years old and you get this from his perspective. And it's just, it's such a beautiful book. And also each chapter, has little drawings like this one has this one this one has a thermometer and it's just such a good book i breezed through this it was it's a great book i did not expect it it did um shortlist for the costa film novel award and um again five stars fully recommend um never heard of it but i wish i had so this is my name is leon Okay, now it's time for November. November is the last month where I have five stars. So no December. And November is the last month. These are the books. Okay, so I read first um, If the Witness Lied by Carolyn B. Cooney. Again, secondhand. Picked it for the cover. No idea what it was about. Uh, then I read Dr. Wright by Janet Tronstadt. I bought it just for the giggles, honestly. Did not disappoint. 
Um, then I read The Night Before Christmas and The Little Penguin by Patrick Benson. Okay, so let's start in order. The first book I read in November was If the Witness Lied, and it's about four siblings. Uh, I want to say four siblings. Uh, Jack, Cheryl, Triss, and they have a little brother, the brother's Triss, I'm pretty sure. It's like I remember these books. It's like I'm reviewing them right now. I swear I read it. Um, it's a, it's about some siblings. One, two, three, four. There are four siblings. Uh, the brother, the two sisters, and the tiny brother. Uh, and Diana, who's just like a sidekick. Just uh, the babysitter. She's also a kid. Um, if the witness lied is the book about these four siblings and both of their parents died. Uh, their mom died of cancer and that took a toll on them. But the problem arised when their father died and their father died from a car accident. And they all uh, thought, well, everyone thought it was the little brother's fault, Tris, who was a few months at a time or maybe a year, um, who was in the car. And everyone thought it was Triss who backed into the father and killed him. So there was all this um, media attention, media press. And it was the mother's sister, dead mother's sister, who uh, comes to look after them. And it's the story of these siblings and how they all come together to just resolve the mystery of their father's death somehow, uh, death somehow and just how they stick together to, I don't know, make a family. And I will say there's there's a huge, how do I say the plot twist? It's not really a plot twist because I could guess it from faster than half of the movie. Uh, half of the book, it becomes a movie once you read it. Half of the book. And my explanation is terrible, but genuinely it's such a short book. It's it's 213 pages, but it's written pretty big. It's, it's not now that I look at it. it it's, it's quick. I uh, read it in like two days. Um, beautiful book. Again, the writing is so nice. It jumps from the perspective of each sibling. Well, of the three siblings, because the fourth is too little to have any opinions. Um, and it's just so, so well written. Fully recommend if the witness lied. Uh, then I read, <laughs> so embarrassed to even mention this. Um, then I read Dr. Wright by Janet Tronstad. Um, if you want to know what this book is about, just think Hallmark movie, any movie. They're all exactly the same. It's about this, um, this doctor who's very handsome very eligible and a doctor he's always like when i say doctor i mean pediatrician so that's supposed to make him more attractive i guess um who is in alaska again it's very re remote and very cold um let me just read you the blurb like i said this is a book review channel I'm not good at them. We'll deal with it. Um, okay. Treasure Creek, Alaska has only one pediatrician. The very handsome, very eligible Dr. Alex Haven. Uh, but the former big city doc is counting the weeks till his contract with the tiny town is up. Also, he can return to Los Angeles to start a clinic in his brother's honor. His brother's not dead, by the way. He's very much alive. This makes it sound like he's dead. Brother's alive. <laughs> um, nurse Marian Jenner is determined to keep Alex in Alaska by finding him a bride and giving him a new reason to stay. But when a little boy's life and Miriam's hope is jeopardized, Alex might find his own reason to stay forever. Spoiler alert, they get married in the end. And that's like the last two pages because this didn't really build that well. With the amount of complaining I, I'm having right now, you'd think this was like a two-star. 
but I loved it. <laughs> it was so it was so good. Like it wasn't forced. I feel like a lot of these can I say trashy? <laughs> a lot of these trashy books have very possessive and aggressive and dominant male leads. And Alex is so chill, uh, chill, chill. He's very chill. <laughs> He's like, also, this is from the series Alaskan Bride Rush, which tells you everything you need to know about this book. Um, I don't know. It was a feel good book. It's just, it didn't have any pretensions. Um, I read it because I thought it's Alaska and it's cold. So this feels like a November book my mind somehow did that but um very easy read is the kind of book you buy with a magazine um probably was um again second hand bought it for the giggles uh, but i actually really liked it so i would say read this i don't know where you could possibly find it genuinely do not know but um again feel good book if you don't want to watch a Hallmark movie and decide to read it instead, this is it. It was fine. I don't know what to tell you. Then I read um, The Night Before Christmas and read as a stretch because most of the book is pictures. It does have some tiny writing uh, throughout, but um, I wanted to get in the mood for Christmas and just enjoy it. So this is... This is a book I read and honestly, I don't know how you can give it lower. It's a children's book, obviously, but Christmas is for everyone. So five stars, easy, five stars. And then the last book I read in 2023, that was a five star, which is a odd, very odd thing to say when this is the book, is Little Penguin by Patrick Benson. Again. There's really not much written in it, like, at all. Let me just... Like, this, these two pages combined have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 words. But the art is so pretty. And it's just about this penguin and how he splashes into the water. I also thought this was... um Christmassy, it has nothing to do with Christmas, but there is snow, so you could say that it is Christmassy somehow. Um, it's about Pip, um, who's a little penguin, Adelie, Adelie penguin, and she's smaller than all the emperor penguins. And it's, it's about her adventures, there's not really much into it. But I just found the Pip to be such a cute little penguin. I mean, again, children's book, no big expectations, but it was really lovely. I, I do encourage you to read children's books from time to time. They're just, they're so heartwarming and the art is so pretty. So um, also support the illustrators. They're very important, very important. Um, so yeah, this was a really, really nice book. So those were all my books for 2023 that I gave five stars. I read far more than I expected to read. Um, and I'm also very proud of the fact that there were that many five stars. Genuinely love that for me. Um, yeah, I do encourage you to read any of those that you found interesting and sounded good. So um, let me know if there's any. Also this video, I made myself a plan to make it less than 10 minutes short because long videos, I love long videos, but not everyone does. And I was like, let me make a short video. Something tells me this will not be a short video. So I do apologize, but I, I, I really hope this is not as blurry as last time. If it is, I'm really, really, really sorry. But if it's not, you're welcome. Um, so yeah, um, be good. I mean, feel good, whatever you want, just buy, like, and subscribe. Bye.